Hello everyone, it's Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars, and I'm coming right back at you with yet another spectacular vehicle. Today, I'm sitting behind the wheel of a beautiful and super charming 1964 and a half Ford Mustang hardtop that is a rare and matching numbers example of an early classic pony car. You've got to check this out. To start off this uh, video here, this is a non-rehearsed video. There might be a lot of information that I do forget, so please visit our website at msclassiccars.com for a complete description with a ton of highly detailed photos. If you have or have not been following MS Classic Cars, please note that I only collect number one and number two condition vehicles. I've been doing that since inception. I'm very proud to say that we're the only classic car dealership in the country that th services everything that we sell and we document that work with an invoice. As an example, in this brand new binder that I put together for this car, we do this with every vehicle we sell. The first thing that you will see is the invoice for all the work that we did. This documents that we invested $9,192.45 making this vehicle ready for you today. Uh, we also detail these vehicles to the highest level possible to get what you see here presented in this video. And again, please remember to check out all the photos of this car. Um, before I get into uh, the presentation of this particular car, I just want to touch base uh, for a moment on uh, what the early cars, the 64 and a half, 65 and 66 Mustangs mean to me. My first uh, classic car, people always ask me when I got into this business, how did it all start for you? Well, it started with a 1965 Ford Mustang hardtop. Uh, I do refer to them sometimes as a coupe. Um, it was a beautiful car. I owned it around the 2000 uh, time frame. We actually have posted a picture in our photo gallery of me uh, standing next to that car. I was so proud of it. Um, matter of fact, the email address that I use now still has the word 65 Stang in the email uh, that does reference that particular car. So over all the years, uh, we fast forward to 2023, um, I have still a huge passion for these first generation Mustangs. This is really where it all first started. But I will tell you, it is very hard to find a coupe, especially a coupe uh, that does have um, its original color combination, original drivetrain, and is restored to the quality of what I go after. Um, I would say that those vehicles are far and few between. Uh, that's why I haven't had more of them over the years. Uh, but this particular example here is a very special car, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, so I'm going to reference my notes uh, throughout this uh, presentation here, so please uh, make sure to, uh, again, reference anything uh, on the website and so forth if I miss it here. Uh, this charming, again, when I say charming, uh, this is truly a gentleman's coupe. 
Uh, no offense to the ladies, uh, but when I say charming, it just has a certain look to it where it's just a really sweet, sweet ride. Very quiet looking. It just uh, presents itself very well. So I thought charming would be the perfect word to describe it. Um, again, 1964 and a half Ford Mustang Coupe is a rare and matching numbers example of an early classic pony car. As the combination of the VIN and the data plate indicate, this car was built in Dearborn, Michigan on May 21st, 1964 as a 1965 Ford Mustang hardtop, again, coupe, which is recognized as a 64 and a half model. It was ordered with a Guardsman blue exterior, white vinyl and blue trim interior, 260 V8, C4 automatic transmission, and 3.00 standard differential rear end. This color in person is absolutely stunning to say the least. Uh, so I'll get into that more in a minute. Uh, but again, this is a very desirable color amongst Mustang enthusiasts. From the information uh, that I've gathered, it was also equipped with the following options. It had backup lights, the WS uh, knockoff hub covers. It had the 6.50 14-inch tires, the AM radio, a uh, full console, and power steering. It was shipped to Richmond, Virginia, uh, district where it was retailed new. The ownership history is unknown until it was discovered at the sale at the Carlisle Collector Car Flea Market in Corral, located in Carlisle, Pennsylvania in 2009. For anybody that doesn't know Carlisle, Carlisle is kind of like the Woodstock, if you will, of swap meets, uh, cars that are for sale, parts that are for sale. Uh, they've got tons of automobilia for sale. It's a really big thing that's been going on forever. I've been to Carlisle two, three times over the years. They even have a small auction now. Definitely a really cool event. I can envision this car uh, in the grass. There's kind of a couple of big rolling hills in Carlisle and just seeing this thing uh, as kind of a survivor project, whatever you want to reference it as, uh, for sale. So the gentleman who actually came across the vehicle, uh, his name is Stephen uh, Shapak, as I believe how to pronounce his last name. He lives in M Mountersville, Pennsylvania. Stephen's father worked for the Ford Motor Company at the factory in Methuen, New Jersey. Um, so Stephen was a Ford enthusiast from a very young age. When Stephen uh, discovered this car at Carlisle, he knew uh, it was special because it was a matching numbers, 1964 and a half, uh, Ford Mustang hardtop with desirable options. He collaborated with a local restorer in 2010 to undergo a complete restoration. His vision was to restore the way that Ford originally built it. Um, he salvaged as many of the original parts as possible. He also sourced many original and correct parts as possible. The restoration was completed in 2012 and it resulted in this beautiful example. Stephen enjoyed the car for the next 10 years before selling it to MS Classic Cars in October of 2022. This is the first time that MS Classic Cars has offered it for sale. So again, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, when the Mustang was released, it was uh, the earlier cars, uh, depending on their VIN uh, numbers, depending on their production dates, the early cars, which are highly collectible, are referenced as 64 and a half Mustangs, even though Ford uh, would advertise them as 1965, although the title on this vehicle is 1965, there's clearly a ton of information uh, that people reference as a 64 and a half. So regarding that, uh, when you look at the VIN number on this vehicle, again, uh, I'm just going to kind of go over this here quickly. And again, you can see all this within our photo gallery. Um, the first digit of the VIN is a five, which is basically the 1965. The F uh, in the VIN number would be the Dearborn assembly plant. The 07 would be the hardtop. Uh, the engine code would be the 260. It's an F code. That's the true giveaway for a uh, early car being a 1964 and a half. And then of course you got the consecutive unit number, which would be the, the last six digits of the VIN number. When you look at the um, uh, data plate 
that's on this vehicle, which uh, Stephen, when he got the vehicle, the data plate was really worn out, but it was still legible enough. So what he did is he contacted Kevin Marty at Marty Auto Works. Uh, they're the supplier for a lot of the Ford stuff when they were new. Uh, they do Marty reports. Uh, they do uh, Eppinger reports. They do window stickers, reproduction, of course. And then, of course, they reproduce these uh, data plates and so forth. So everything that was on this data plate was exactly the way it was when he found the car. Again, he found the car as a survivor. You can call it a project, if you will. It was just an older Mustang that needed a restoration and so forth. So again, based on this here, 65A would be the coupe with standard interior. Um, as far as the exterior paint, it would be an F, which is the Guardsman's blue. Uh, when you look at the trim uh, code here, it's 42, which is the white, vinyl, and blue trim. And then of course the date code. This is uh, basically showing you here that it was May. It was the 21st day because it was an E. Um, and then of course it's 21 E. Uh, then it has the district, which I had said earlier in the, in the first paragraph I was reading, that was Richmond, uh, Virginia. And then of course you got the axle ratio, which is a one, which is the 3.00. And then you have the transmission code, which was a six, which was the C4 automatic transmission. So that's kind of a breakdown of this uh, VIN number and data plate here, very important information. I also, in this binder here, have a reproduction window sticker that Steven had made. He did this more for car shows. Because this car was extremely original when he got it, he knew exactly what features the car had. So he took those features, because they don't tell you on, it, obviously, the VIN number or on the data uh, plate and so forth, what options the car had regarding things like uh, the tires or the power steering or the backup lights and so forth. Those were all things that were clearly on the car. So he made this window sticker here. Uh, interesting enough, uh, the sticker price was $2,985.35. I did tag that reproduction in the photo gallery, so there's no confusion. I uh, want to be as transparent as possible. This is clearly not the original window sticker. And then, of course, I included some other things here about how the Mustang was born, talks a lot about uh, Ford's uh, division and Lee Iacocca and all of that. And then also you'll notice um, in the photo gallery, you'll see some of these um, instruction guides. These are for the windshield um, sun visors. This is for the heating control. And there's some other things like if you were taking the car to a car show and you wanted to have it judged, you would put those things inside the car. And then there's also a reproduction owner's manual as well. So that kind of covers everything that I put in this brand new binder. I even um, made this car with a blue binder to kind of match the color of the car. So again, that is included. So let's get into the exterior of the vehicle here. Um, I'm gonna kind of just bounce back and forth with my notes. Um, obviously the exterior of this car is gorgeous with its timeless design and beautiful color. Uh, from the information that I've gathered, the body does retain a lot of its original sheet metal. Um, it was noted by Steven that when the restoration was done, he did replace the rear quarters. Uh, so it did have rear quarters installed. Uh, the bottom of the quarters uh, were rusty and so forth, and he definitely wanted to change that. Um, the 64 and a half Mustangs were outfitted with a more rounded edge a hood than the 65. That's another indication of a 64 and a half as it has a slightly different front fascia to the hood. Uh, you can do some more research on that. Um, the body on this vehicle is really straight. It's got good fitment throughout. Um, it was again repainted in its original factory color of Gardens Blue. This is a very rare and very desirable color, again, amongst the first generation Mustang enthusiasts. The paint is show quality. Um, throughout, it has been detailed by MS Classic Cars to a brilliant shine. The front windshield, uh, this vent glass that you see here, um, and the rear quarter glass, which actually we replaced the rear quarter glass because I wanted new chrome strips and they only came uh, with the chrome strips if you got the glass for the rear uh, quarter glass. So all of that was replaced new. The door glass and the rear glass that's in the back, uh, the big piece of glass in the rear, is original and it's stamped with the car light stamp in it. You can clearly see that. Um, I would obviously say because this glass was replaced new, it's in beautiful shape, but I would also comment that the door glass, is, even though it does have some light scratching, it's in really nice shape and so is the glass in the back as well. Um, everything on the exterior, uh, such as 
the uh, glass stainless trim, the wiper arms, the blades, the antenna, this driver's side mirror here, uh, the front grill. It does have Ford uh, headlights, uh, front bumper, parking light bezels, and lights, emblems, door handles, the rear quarter trim, the lower rocker molding, the taillight bezels, the lenses, the uh, gas cap, the rear bumper, the reverse light bezels and lenses, all of that stuff has been replaced, new or restored. It's in beautiful condition. Um, in 1964 and a half, Mustangs did not have the cable also on the gas cap. That's another indication, little tidbit of information there. The car does sit perfectly, in my opinion, on the 14-inch uh, steel wheels with the correct spinner hubcaps uh, with the Mustang in the center. Uh, this car looks very similar to that car I had mentioned that I owned uh, many years ago. My wheels had the same type of white wall tire with those spinner hubcaps. I think they look super, super classy. Um, the wheels are wrapped on this car with new U.S. Royal Safety 800, 6.95, 14-inch white wall, four-ply tires that were added uh, by MS Classic Cars when it did go through our service department. So those are brand spanking new. Uh, again, most dealers, uh, most private individuals would never replace the tires because the restoration was done in 2010. The car hasn't really been driven a lot of miles, um, but again, 13 years later, 2023, we absolutely uh, wanted to make sure we put on a new tire so when somebody does drive the car, they have nothing to be concerned about and so forth. Um, so we get to the interior. The interior of this car is also absolutely gorgeous with its timeless design. You sit behind the seat uh, at the steering wheel and a seat here of a 1964 and a half Mustang, 65, 66. It's just a, it's just a timeless look, super beautiful cars. Um, again, this color combination is very complementary to the exterior color. It, again, it was refinished in its original factory colors of uh, white vinyl and blue trim. Everything in the interior has also been replaced or restored, such as the headliner, which I will make a comment. Uh, although this headliner is brand new, it does have a little bit of wrinkling. Not a big deal, uh, but I just want to make sure that people are aware of that. It's not a super tight headliner. Again, it does show some wrinkling um, and so forth. The sun visors are brand new. All the brackets are brand new. The rear view mirror, the dash, the dash pad, this black fascia to the, uh, to the dash here, which also has a matching glove box door uh, with a, uh, a pony emblem that's over on the right-hand side. All the dash hardware, the steering wheel, the centerpiece of the steering wheel, the door panels, the bucket seats, the rear seat, the carpeting, the full console, everything has been restored or replaced and it is in absolutely beautiful condition in here. Uh, again, I can't say enough about this interior. When you look at the trunk compartment, it also was nicely restored. They were painted body color inside. Then it was of course outfitted with the correct style trunk mat in the full matching spare with Jack. So again, uh, beautiful work, definitely a car. Uh, that you could leave the door open at a car show and let people see how nice the attention to detail in here is. Definitely a really, really uh, sharp interior. Now, this is where uh, things get even better, in my opinion, when you open the hood of this car. Um, the engine compartment is nicely detailed with many correct parts. Uh, Steven had all the stickers put in the correct spots and everything uh, to make it look as, as accurate as possible. Um, and then it was repainted in the correct shade of black on the firewall, the inner fenders, and the radiator support. The driver's side inner fender does retain its original uh, VIN stamping, which is always on the driver's side uh, inner fender. You can see that in the photos. Um, the car is powered by its original born with 260 V8 that was completely rebuilt during the restoration process. Um, I did write the casting numbers down. I wrote the date casting numbers down. You can reference that in the description. Um, the engine was uh, repainted in its correct shade of black with the beautiful blue valve covers. It's equipped with a factory correct auto light two barrel carburetor the blue air cleaner, and the black radio resistance wires. Um, a new battery uh, has been installed and it's been outfitted with an auto light battery topper. So that topper that's on top of that battery is just a plastic piece. It just represents uh, what an original battery would have looked like, but there is a modern battery underneath there. Um, again, all of the uh, connections and terminals and everything has been replaced. It looks super, super sharp. Um, the engine is cooled by a new correct style radiator. 
The engine breathes through factory manifolds and a new exhaust system. Uh, the engine is coupled to the original Bournemouth C4 automatic transmission that was also completely rebuilt uh, during the restoration process. Again, I wrote down the transmission numbers and everything you can reference within our description. The power is transferred to the original Bournemouth rear end with the 3.00 gears. And again, the original tag is there with all the numbers on the rear end for anybody that really cares to look at it. Uh, and again, this car is equipped with original factory power steering. You'll notice that the power steering is very unique on these earlier cars, really cool. I actually love the color of it, but again, look at the photos that we have of this engine compartment. Um, it is definitely done to a high standard. Uh, this is a perfect car uh, and it kind of alludes a little bit to the undercarriage now that I'm on the subject. For anybody that wants a super, super nice driver, this car was restored to show quality standards, the body, the paint, the interior, the trunk, and obviously the engine compartment. But I will go on record and say that it's not over restored. Uh, many cars that we have at MS Classic Cars, I'm proud to say, are strong number ones. Uh, there are cars that were over restored. I think those cars are awesome too. Uh, but this car is not an over restored car. It's a beautiful show car that was really uh, built to enjoy and drive. The car had undercoating on it when Steven got it. So he left all that undercoating on the car. There was no need to really change any of that. Um, he refreshed it. And then of course, all these years later, when we detailed the car at MS Classic Cars, we also refreshed it as well. Um, so it does look really clean and presentable um, underneath. Um, again, everything was restored or replaced. The fuel tank, the fuel lines, the steering system, the braking system, all the suspension, everything was completely gone through. And I'll finish off this, uh, this presentation here by saying again, at the bottom of my description, finding a 1964 and a half Ford Mustang hardtop is becoming tougher and tougher as the years go on. Think of it like this. If you were to find one of these cars, you're gonna pay as much money to restore one as you would pay to restore a fastback or a convertible. And a lot of times people don't wanna sink the money into a coupe because they're not looking to get, you know, 100,000 or 150,000 when the car's done. So it's really, really hard to find Mustang coupes, especially the early cars that are restored to this quality. This is truly uh, an opportunity. It's a great investment. These cars, this is where it all started. These cars are really fun. Uh, they make great conversation pieces. Again, I can't say enough about them. Um, this again is where it all started. So that concludes uh, my presentation. I will ask if you have not signed up for the MS Classic Cars VIP email blast, please do that. That's the best way to follow us. We have thousands of people that are on there. We are also on all the other social media platforms as well. So please make sure uh, to follow us, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or what have you, we would appreciate it. I'll say it over and over again that MS Classic Cars is not a huge dealership, uh, but we are definitely doing big things. Please do your homework on the company, see what we've done, see what we've sold. We've got over almost, nine, almost 800 vehicles on our sold page that you can reference. Ask people, uh, get on the internet and do your, your own due diligence. Um, I think you'll be really impressed with what you find. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this car right now, let you listen how beautiful it runs. Just the flip of a key, and there it is. She's purring like a kitten, you can't make it up. Thanks again for watching, we appreciate it, and as always, rock and roll.